have communicated in no uncertain terms with every player in the region that that's a red line for us and that there would be enormous consequences if we start seeing movement on the chemical weapons front uh, or the use of chemical weapons. I'm not talking about red lines. I'm not having a debate or conversation about red lines, or I'm not setting red lines. Let's talk, not talk about red today. So you're saying sure. you'll be held accountable. It's been a year. Well, I, um, it, it has been. And we are in a circumstance where the Assad regime is still in power. But you have a large segment of the international community aligned against them. You have the United States of America providing uh, assistance to the opposition. This is a, a, a situation that is ongoing. There is a lot going on in the Middle East. Let's start in Syria where there are allegations by the rebels on the ground uh, that chemical weapons have been used to kill more than a thousand people. There are allegations that are impossible to verify. It's too dangerous to get inside Syria for journalists. Uh, but those are the allegations right now. And this is the second time that these allegations have been coming forward with some video to follow them. Uh, we'll start there, but before we get to the panel and introducing them, here's what the president said before going into Libya in 2011. To brush aside America's responsibility as a leader, and more profoundly our responsibilities to our fellow human beings under such circumstances, would have been a betrayal of who we are. Some nations may be able to turn a blind eye to atrocities in other countries. The United States of America is different. And as President, I refuse to wait for the images of slaughter and mass graves before taking action. So what about this in that context? Let's bring in our panel. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard. Juan Williams, columnist with The Hill and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, Steve, some estimates have um, well more than 100,000 killed in Syria. But there is no appetite in the U.S. for getting involved in Syria. No, I think that's right, and I think that's part of the reason that the president hasn't felt any pressure to actually do in Syria what he did in Libya. Remember, when he made those comments about Libya, the estimates by Amnesty International and others of the death toll were around a thousand, and the president, you know, gave what was a, I think, an impassioned moral case for U.S. leadership. Uh, he went on to say that when leaders and institutions like the United Nations, like the United States, speak out and say things that then aren't followed up. They are empty words and they lose credibility. Their words lose credibility. That's exactly what we're seeing here, as you suggested. A year after the president declared red lines, uh, we haven't done anything. We have proof that the Syrians used chemical weapons. The administration has acknowledged as much. This may be another instance of that and even a, a bigger instance of that. And yet there has been no real consequence. The president warned of enormous consequences. There have been no consequences whatsoever. You know, one, they're saying today, uh, if it's all true, and now understand that they've, they've confirmed one incident, now there are at least two more that are being alleged, and the video is, is really graphic, if yes. you look at it all. Uh, they'll say, they're saying they'll be held accountable. Uh, if you're in Syria, and you look at this administration and hear that, what are you thinking? Well, you're thinking it's an empty threat at this point. I mean, the, the, the problem for the United States for the Obama administration, but for anybody who's who's involved with this, as we heard from uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, is that if you get involved and you say I'm arming the rebels, down the line you could be arming Al Qaeda. You don't know who it is that you're helping or hurting, and clearly that leaves you with the option then of direct American intervention, saying we're going to intervene, not necessarily put boots on the ground. But we're going to go and we can provide air cover, we can bomb where we believe that these chemicals are being stored, uh, we can make interventions in terms of cutting off uh, highways that could deliver these weapons. That's what would have to be done. So uh, it seems to me like when you hear that from General Dempsey, you're hearing from lots of people that this is a, this is a bad situation and no easy, clear answers. There have been many bad situations that the, the U.S. Charles has decided we had to act, um, whether this is one of them. To Juan's point, uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs writes in a letter to uh, Congressman Elliot Engel, quote, Syria today is not about choosing between two sides, but rather about choosing among one 
many, about, among many sides, it's my belief that the side we choose must be ready to promote their interests and ours when the balance shifts in their favor. Today they are not. But Congressman Engel, a Democrat, responded, quote, I reject the notion that our involvement in Syria would simply constitute choosing sides between one armed group and another. Rather, our involvement represents a choice between hastening the end of the Assad regime or continuing to allow the cycle of violence, displacement, and terror to continue unabated. Well, the irony is they're both right. Uh, Engel is right that had, particularly, had we early in the Civil War put our efforts on behalf of the rebels before the jihadists flooded in from Iraq and from Afghanistan and elsewhere, and when the bulk of the rebellion was spontaneous, secular, national, is from every segment, population, we would have had a decisive influence and Assad would be gone. Right now we're in a situation where the jihadists are in, where there are more than two sides, and any aid would be problematic. I think Dempsey is right. The irony is, second irony, that in Egypt, where there are only two sides, there's only the Brotherhood and there's only the military with wide popular support, we're not choosing either. And I think, in fact, the Ob administration's incoherence on policy is astounding. The, the tape you showed of Obama speaking about the intervention in Libya and using a humanitarian explanation and justification shows how completely incoherent the policy is. The, the only constant in all of this is Obama as a candidate, as a senator, decided we should be out of these wars, we should be out of the Middle East, the tide of war is receding, he repeats it over and over again, and pretends it's true. And that is the constant. We're not in Iraq, we're not in Syria, we're not in...